Hi there, everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Nas, native English speaker, CELTA certified, and I have created the power of 12. What is the power of 12? Well, with 12 years of international experience in China, Turkey, and online, I firmly believe that all you need are 12 pieces of advanced vocabulary per topic to go from stuck at B2 to an advanced speaker of English. Yes, C1, C2, here we come. In this series, the phrases will include C1 and C2 words, idioms, and phrasal verbs, which are topic specific. So this makes it perfect for those of you out there who are taking the IELTS exam. So if you're ready to master ESL vocabulary with our 12 words max format, stay tuned until the end. Now today the gloves are off and I want to talk about a topic that has really riled me up recently. It's something that we all, we all have to deal with at some point in our lives. Some of us have to even deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is negativity and toxic people. So have you ever heard the phrase, talking to some people is like drinking from a broken glass? This is a powerful metaphor that perfectly captures the experience of interacting with people who drain your energy and leave you shattered. These people are broken and they leave you bleeding when you interact with them. Stick around because we're going to explore how to handle these situations with grace and strength. So what exactly does talking to some people is like drinking from a broken glass mean? And when I say that phrase, who pops into your mind? Let's start by unpacking this metaphor. Imagine trying to drink from a glass that's cracked and jagged. Not only will the liquid spill out, but the sharp edges could cut you, will cut you, shredding your lips apart, causing pain. Similarly, when you engage with toxic people, the conversation often leaves you feeling wounded emotionally and mentally. These interactions can be draining, harmful, and ultimately unproductive. Have I escaped this? No. In fact, I had a recent run-in with someone that really left me bleeding and shattered. But enough about me. Let's look at those 12 advanced English phrases that are going to take you from stuck at B2 to C1, C2. And the first one is emotional vampires. And these are people who drain your energy by constantly complaining, criticizing, or bringing negativity into your life. Energy vampires. So how do we protect ourselves from these emotional vampires? It feels like a losing battle, doesn't it? But I'm going to help you with a couple tips. And tip number one, set boundaries. First and foremost, set clear boundaries. Toxic people often push limits, so it's crucial to establish what you are willing to tolerate. If someone constantly brings negativity into your conversations, it's okay to limit your interactions with them. And that brings us to our next advanced English phrase, which is draw the line. And draw the line means to set a clear boundary or limit on what is acceptable. So for example, if a colleague is always complaining, you might say, I understand you're frustrated, but I prefer to focus on solutions rather than dwelling on the negatives. And by doing this, you are drawing the line and protecting your own mental space. Hey, fun fact, the science of negativity, did you know? that our brains are wired to focus on negative experiences more than positive ones. And this is called the negativity bias. And it's why negative interactions can have such a powerful impact on us. And understanding this can help us be more mindful 
when we start to feel overwhelmed by someone's negativity. I wish that I had all the answers. I don't, but what I do have is tip number two, and that is to practice detachment. What does practice detachment mean? Well, this is another powerful strategy. This doesn't mean being cold or uncaring, but rather not allowing someone's negativity to affect your emotions. Think of it as putting up an emotional shield. Another advanced English phrase, water off a duck's back. And this means to not let something affect you, to let negativity slide away without impact. So when someone criticizes you unfairly or tries to drag you into their drama, imagine their words just sliding off you like water off a duck's back. This helps you stay calm and centered even in the face of negativity. I remember a time when I had to interact with someone who was incredibly toxic. No matter what, they always found something to complain about. It got to a point where I dreaded our meetings, but then I started setting boundaries and practicing detachment. It wasn't easy at first, but over time, I noticed a huge difference in how I felt about our interactions. The other person didn't change. I changed. I was no longer drained or upset because I had taken back control. I don't have all the answers, but I do have tip number three. And focus on solutions, not problems. So one way to redirect negativity is by shifting the focus to solutions rather than problems. When someone is stuck in a cycle of complaining, gently steer the conversation towards possible solutions. I'm going to admit this doesn't always work. If the glass is really broken, you're not going to win that battle. Now, an advanced English phrase, turn the tables, and turn the tables means to reverse the situation to your advantage. For example, if someone is constantly criticizing a project, you could say, I hear your concerns. What do you think could be done to improve this? You've turned the tables. You are encouraging a more productive conversation. And let's see what they have to say. Probably nothing much. Now, how do you handle toxic people? Let's do a quick quiz to see how you handle the toxic people who cross your path. I'll ask a few questions and grab a notebook. Keep track of your answers. So when someone starts complaining, do you A, join in and complain too. Let's make this a complaining party. B, listen and then suggest a solution. C, tune them out completely, act completely deaf. Next up, if a colleague criticizes your work unfairly, do you A, get defensive and argue back. B, ask them for constructive feedback. C, ignore their comments entirely. Now, if you answered mostly these, congratulations, you already practicing some great techniques for dealing with toxic people. But hey, I have a couple more tips for you. So know when to walk away. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, a relationship or interaction is just too toxic to maintain. The other person is simply too broken. The other person doesn't need a friend. That person needs therapy and lots and lots of therapy. That person is so broken that super glue is not going to help. So in these cases, it's important to know when to walk away. And this might mean reducing contact, limiting conversations to specific topics, or in extreme cases, cutting ties altogether. It does depend on the situation. Now, an advanced English phrase, because I promised you 12, the power of 12, to get you to C1C2. Cut the cord. And when I say cut the cord, I mean to end a relationship or connection, usually one that has become unhealthy. And you know, walking away doesn't mean you have failed. It means you've recognized that the situation isn't healthy for you 
It's an act of self-care. And to be honest with you guys, in the instances where I haven't cut the cord, where I haven't realized that the situation isn't healthy for me, I've ended up really sick. The stress actually makes me sick. So in 2024, it's all about self-care. What's healthy for me? And cut that cord, chop, chop, chop. Okay. Now I have a fun fact for you, the power of positivity. And here's an interesting fact. Research shows that surrounding yourself with positive people can actually boost your immune system and increase your overall well-being. And this is just another reason to be mindful of the company you keep. Next tip, balance out any negativity by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Spend time with people who uplift you, who inspire you. This will not only improve your mood, but also help you develop a more resilient mindset. Advanced phrase coming up, fill your cup. And fill your cup means to do things that replenish your energy and positivity. So whether it's spending time with supportive friends, engaging in a hobby you love, practicing self-care, make sure you are filling your cup regularly. Now, dealing with toxic people and negativity is never easy, but with the right strategies, you can protect your energy and maintain your peace of mind. Remember, talking to some people may feel like drinking from a broken glass, but remember, you have the power to decide which glasses you sip from. Let's recap our advanced English phrases. Emotional vampires. Draw the line. Water off a duck's back. I don't care what you say. Turn the tables. Cut the cord. Fill your cup. Set boundaries. Practice detachment. Focus on solutions. Know when to walk away. Negativity bias. Emotional shield. And surround yourself with positivity. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on personal growth, advanced English phrases, and mastering the art of communication. See you in the next video. I'm your host, Nas, native English speaker, CELTA certified, and hey, just navigating through life one trending topic at a time. Ciao.